The Americans have, uh, have got this uh, voyage to go down and essentially map the pathways of warm water that are lapping up against Antarctica and doing the melting, or suspected melting, especially in East Antarctica, which has been in the news a lot lately with the very rapid thinning of places like the Totten Glacier. Well, the, uh, it's, the seal is it's effectively like a, an oceanographer just working throughout the year. Uh, instead of the, the, the 30 to 40 days that we have to go down there and do the work, we come home. The seals stay out there and continue to do our work in essence. So they're just collecting more information in different regions, in different times of the year as well that we're not down there. So it's like an automatic weather station, if you like, compared to an actual meteorologist going out and doing its measurements. Over the last few years we've been getting a lot of data back from the seals in a variety of locations around Antarctica and that will be background I guess to where the ship goes so if they can work together then we'll put those two data sets together to fill it up. Going down at this time of year is also an opportunity for us to consider sea ice. This is the growth period for sea ice as it starts to expand and grow again as autumn and winter occur and we're very interested in that here at IMAS and my work in particular has been with autonomous platforms for observing sea ice. Previously we've used underwater vehicles looking at the bottom of the sea ice. We'd also like to try and get these platforms above, so the drones, to actually map the surface of the sea ice. Ideally one day working in concert with each other. This is the first chance we'll have to go down and because it's the sea ice growth period it's a great opportunity to test out the drones. Not only in their sort of scientific capability but just operationally to see how they fare in the very cold weather and uh, the very windy environment. My name is Darren Turner, I work here at the University of Tasmania, member of the Terra Luma research team and we look at using unmanned aerial vehicles for um, remote sensing of the environment. This is the DJI S1000, it's the uh, same as the UAV that Guy is taking to Antarctica to research sea ice. Well in Antarctica there's virtually no access to any other aircraft um, so he's got no other way of getting above the sea ice to, to uh, take photos of it. Um, this gives him the ability to map a relatively small area but in very high detail of the sea ice around the ship at the time. Uh, we've been down about four times with uh, various types of UAVs. Um, I know there's other scientists now using them as well and uh, Guy is uh, an example of a, of a, a full blown project based around them. There's not to my knowledge any uh, existing work in Antarctica of mapping the ice. There has been uh, UAVs used down there for mapping climatic effects and stuff like that. Um, but not actually mapping the ice. Uh, recently, uh, a few years ago, we conducted a project down there mapping uh, moss in Antarctica, which is a very important um, indicator of climate change. When there are aircraft available, like helicopters, they're quite often tasked on um, support duties, moving cargo around and stuff, uh, So, and, and they're obviously very expensive to run. It was uh, the ability to use the UAV over any other facility, which uh, really was the powerful part of the project.